Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with a video today about a paper pad. A while back I bought a bunch of paper pads from the Dollar Tree and this is one of the pads that I had left over that I hadn't made something else with. So I decided to make something with it. I was inspired by a bowl that my friend Cindy bought in Asheville, North Carolina, a ceramic bowl. So I'm trying to mimic that bowl with this project. So I cut the pad into strips, and here I'm showing you that I put the um, the paper in that container because if I hadn't, it would have been all over the place because there's a lot of paper. Now that you know, it, a lot of stuff you buy at Dollar Tree now is a dollar, dollar and a quarter. This was actually a dollar. So I decided that I wanted to sew all the strips together because the thought of just winding one strip at a time made me a little bit nuts. So I got out the sewing machine and I used the zigzag stitch right up the middle of each piece of paper and I never stopped. I just sped one on top of the other so I didn't really have to do any cutting except for at the beginning, the beginning thread and the end threads. Um, took quite a while to sew, sew all those together. I did not realize what I was um, trying to do would be so time consuming. Here I am rolling it up, and this is just one strip. There are probably 30 to 50 strips of paper on there, maybe, and I'm just rolling it up. Here's a small piece just from that one section of paper. Sorry about the lighting. I had daylight and lights going on at the same time. All right, so overnight, I um, rubber banded it together so it wouldn't come apart. All I did was glue the ends together because I didn't want to glue each one of those pieces of paper together. You need to keep in mind this paper is very thin. This is not what this paper was meant to do. This will come back to haunt me later on in the video. And you look at the desk, see how, long, how many strips are in there? That is one section that I sewed together. And I had about 10 or 15 of those, I think, is what I ended up having. This is not an exciting part about making this. <laughs> it's kind of boring. That's why I try to put it on two times, four times, and eight times. All right, there is the stack of paper after I had rolled a couple up. But that's a lot of paper strips. Honestly, it was overwhelming. All right, so I'm going to start on this again and roll and roll and roll. And did I mention I was going to roll? So I just kept winding and winding and winding. There is no good way to do this. All right, so after a while, it gets too hard to hold it in your hand. So I laid it flat on the surface, and you just kind of twist the paper around. Now, it works really well on the glass. Um, as I will find out later, the um, self-healing mat does not, it doesn't work very well. Okay, so I'm now going to measure because I want to see how big it's getting. So I'm trying to show you my progress through all the paper that I rolled. I'm sorry, I back out and zoom in and back out, I think, several times on this one. Or maybe not. Yep, I did. All right, so there's progress. And there we go. We're going to glue some more. <laughs> the one thing about doing it this way is you don't get paper as tightly wound around here as you would like because pulling on it tends to make this very flimsy paper rip. That's why another reason why I sewed it to give it a little more stability. But I didn't want my I didn't want the bowl to be too flimsy. And again, that will come back to haunt me later in the video. <laughs> I had really good intentions. Honestly, I always start out with very hopeful intentions. All right, here's my project basket. I put it overnight, let it sit overnight, because honestly, winding it, it's not too intellectually stimulating. <laughs> so there I am winding again, cut some threads off. Basic white glue will glue to glue it together, will do to glue it together. You can use Aline's, you can use Elmer's, it doesn't really matter. You can actually use um, stick glue too. But pulling on it when you use stick glue might 
prove to be more of a challenge than what you probably want. This paper is really thin, and this is not what this paper was meant to do, as I said earlier. So pulling and tugging on it, you have to be really careful. You will get a different result with heavier paper. Heavier paper will be easier. Um, I cut off some that were too wide and stood up above the rest of the paper that was laying flat. It takes a long time to wind this. You wouldn't think it take that long, but it does. The reason I'm doing a voiceover is I was watching a movie while I was doing this. That's how exciting it is. All right, we're going to measure again. Oh, maybe this is the one where I go in and out and in and out. Yep, it is. First, we have to turn the ruler the proper direction. So I'm past six inches on this. I, I think it was like six and a quarter, six, yeah, somewhere around six and a quarter. Almost six and a half, maybe six and three eighths. No, oh, I don't know. Yeah, six and a quarter. After all that rolling, that's all I got done. All right, after a certain point again, this gets too cumbersome to swirl it around constantly. So now you just, you're winding the paper around the roll because it's too big to pivot on its own with your hand moving it. And, and doing it on the, the mat is too much. And I'm showing you the empty basket. That is all the strips that you saw on the desk, all done. So I did another inch with all those other strips. So I think it ended up to be in about seven and a quarter. Now here's where I do stupid stuff. <laughs> I didn't want the bowl to come apart. So I thought if I put matte medium on it, instead of, you know, just regular glue, who cares? One's the same as the other to me at this point, that I would be able to move and have better control of the paper. Boy, was I wrong. This stuff is very flimsy, and I got carried away and put too much on here. So don't make the same mistake I made. But you will, <laughs> because you'll do the same thing. Well, maybe it's not enough. All right, here I am. Looking at it going, no, it's not, it's not sticky enough. And then I put more on it. I don't know what I was thinking. Ugh. So this is like icing a cake. You just can't get enough icing on that cake. All right, now I'm going to try to slightly move the paper. You have to move it in small sections. And you don't want your paper, one piece of paper, to rise taller in the bunch than the other because it will come unwound and I've done that plenty of times okay so there I am just kind of mashing it with my fingers and trying to mold it with my hands and I decided somewhere in this video that that probably wasn't the best idea to do it so I bring a bowl from the kitchen I didn't have any saran wrap so that's how I ended up with the foil so I'm putting the foil over the bowl so that you know I'll have less of that stickiness to peel off my bowl later because actually you know we eat out of that I've done this many times put wet paper discs over bowls and it works great all right so here I am trying to to mold it onto the bowl and you can see how the paper is kind of puckering outwards. I mean, the pucker means in, but it, it's kind of going outwards when I mash it. Which means I need to move the little paper, the paper down a little bit and kind of slide it down the bowl. But when I did that, I caused some of it to pop out. And you can see me trying to fix it there. Thankfully, it didn't come unraveled. I'm trying to take my time with it. And then all my great wisdom, wait for it, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, so I've put it flat on the board so the bottom of the bowl will be flat. Back over again and I'm looking and thinking going, I don't know. Maybe I need to make an adjustment. So 
So I'm patting it and readjusting and making sure nothing's come loose. And if anything has, I fix it as best I can. Sometimes you can't fix it. Sometimes it's past the point of no return. You really do have to start all over. But that is, I would have had to throw that in the trash. It's just too full of matte medium to really have done too much with it. Okay, so looking, looking, just want to make sure nothing's popped. So I'm trying to slide the layers down so they're pretty even. Some places, when I look at the bowl now, some places turned out a little bit better than others. And I'm fooling around some more. And we're moving it down. And a couple of places came really close to popping out towards the bottom here, which would be the upright. And there it is. <laughs> I could not get enough stuff on there. So thinking I had too much, I put more. <laughs> you know, when you're in the moment, you think you're making the right decision. And after it's over, you go, oh, I went one step too far. And you're going to see more of these steps <laughs> in a few minutes. <laughs> All right, so I could not have got a bigger brush. I had to hang with that little dunk, that little bad brush. That is the worst brush. But it didn't stop me. Nothing came between me and that matte medium on that bowl. Nothing. The phone rang once. I just let it ring. I'm just painting away, listening to the movie in the background. Not paying any attention to what I'm doing. Well, I think I am, but I'm really not. I forgot how matte medium dries on things. Keep that in mind. Okay, now I think waving my hand's going to dry it. No. I want to be able to take this off the foil because I want the inside of the bowl to dry. So I did dry it with the heat gun to form. You know how glue gets that little film over it, but it's still wet inside? So that's what I did so I could get the foil off of it. So I'm here I'm peeling the foil off of the paper bowl insides. It wasn't hard and nothing fell apart. It's just sticky because there's lots of matte medium on it. So I, I'm trying gingerly to peel it off, not to wreck the bowl. Now this took about... I don't know, three days to dry completely. It takes a long time when you soak that much matte medium into a paper pad. <laughs> you know, I only have a week to do these projects. <laughs> and when it takes the bowl four days to dry, it kind of messes up your timing a bit. So I'm drying it on the inside. Okay, so this, it's hard as a rock now because it's had a couple days to dry. All right, so this idea comes from Shannon Green. She talked about putting a sealant on paper beads many years ago when I watched her. Um, she took poly, Minwax polyacrylic sealer and mixed it 50% with water. So I took the polyacrylic, Minwax polyacrylic, mixed it 50-50, and then when you brush it on there, it also makes what you're, what you're brushing it on hard. It was hard from <laughs> the five gallons of matte medium I put on it, but hey, I had to make it harder. The outsides of the bowl towards what would be the top rim of the bowl really were flimsy. And that's what I was trying to do was to reinforce that by adding this um, min, poly minwax stuff. I really was trying to to fix the edges not so much the inside and you can see that the matte medium dried white with clumps and big spots in it and oh what a mess that was but I kept going nothing was going to stop me and there's that stupid brush again I need to throw that thing in the trash all right so it dries and now because I see it so ugly I'm going to add more to it I took white paint <laughs> and painted over it because it was so ugly on the inside with all the clumps of white matte medium. I decided, well, if I paint it white, 
it won't matter. Well, the white paint kind of clumped up in the same places that the matte medium did. And here you will see all the empty spaces. But wait, there's more. Oh, there's more. <laughs> I look at this and I think, good Lord. So I just keep painting that white paint on there. I'm thinking, oh, it's looking better. Well, then in all my brilliance, <laughs> I turn it over and white paint is seeping through the layers of the, <laughs> of the bowl. That was not glue. That was white paint that was dripping <laughs> onto the other side. I mean, what a mess. So I took the baby wipe out and cleaned it up. All right, now I've decided that that's too white. It's too ugly. I have to put more on it because now I have to cover up the cover-up of the cover-up. <laughs> Here's how I store my tissue paper in these um, plastic envelopes. So I decided to match the, the lime green and the pink because it, I like it. The color on the outside of the bowl. So I just ripped a couple of pieces of uh, tissue paper to use to decoupage with. I'm trying desperately to fix my mistakes. There's got to be a certain point when you say, okay, stop. But there was nobody around to tell me <laughs> to stop. Oh, my word. We're going to put more stuff on it. This is da uh, napkin decoupage that I was gifted. <laughs> I hadn't used it in so long it was starting to separate. Okay, so now I'm brushing this stuff on it. <laughs> and I'm going to put the tissue paper over it to cover up the 50,000 layers of other stuff I put on there thinking it was so cool. <laughs> this was fun, even though I had to cover up like 10 layers of bad decisions. <laughs> so I'm slathering that stuff on, putting the tissue paper on, and I try to make sure that I get the tissue paper right up to the very edge of the bowl because really it still needs reinforcing it's still flimsy even with <laughs> all that stuff i did to it that paper is still very thin oh my word i think i need to back off the knitting a little bit and spend more time figuring out how to do stuff the right way <laughs> Good grief. Really, all this stuff made perfect sense to me while I was doing it. Okay, I'm enrolled in fodder school, and so this is my fodder keeper, and there are all the things I learned how to make. And I'm thinking, well, you know, that's just a plain bowl with pink and green tissue paper decoupaged on it. It needs some flair. So I go through the whole book and I'm looking and I'm trying and I can't decide stuff. What I cut out was looking at the ephemera. I looked at napkins and I cut all those out of the video because it was like an hour and 20 minutes long and I figured this was just ridiculous. So I go through them and I'm looking and then I audition some of the flowers. Nope. No. Maybe. I don't know. That looks like the best one of the group. Yep. It was. So I picked the little pink flower that has leaves on both sides of it. I, I needed for it to be balanced looking because Lord knows the rest of it really needed help. So I'm going to glue watercolor paper with watercolor on it onto this decoupage bowl with 50 layers of white stuff. I'm so proud of it. <laughs> There's the outside of it and it's done. Okay, so I'm back here now with no voiceover <laughs> um, with the famous matte medium paper bowl. 
So I wanted to show you what the outside looked like. I'm sorry about the shadows, but I wanted to show you that it's wrinkly and textured and that's what I was going for. Um, the inside looks much better than it did. But let me show you this. See what I was talking about flimsy? You can fold this rim. This is still too flimsy. I won't be using anything heavy duty in it. And see how it's separated here? I was trying to fill that in with matte medium so it would, yeah, nothing worked. So I kept putting polyacrylic on it. Um, what I was laughing about and didn't it didn't convey in the video is how I took this watercolor flower and I'm gluing it onto something and then without thinking about it being watercolor, I took the Minwax stuff and went over it and I was like, oh, oh my word. <laughs> so it did smear it a little bit around here, but that's okay. After all the other mistakes I made in this bowl, that's just minor. <laughs> Anyhow. I just like the texture and how it looks. I, you know, I'm not usually a pink sort of person, but for some reason, this just really appealed to me. <laughs> okay, so let me bring in a bowl from the past. This is, now look at the, the size difference, and you can look at the depth difference too. This is a more, this is a much wider, more sturdy bowl than this one is. This one's deeper and smaller, but this one is made, it, made out of half inch paper that's been folded in and then folded in and creased and then glued in strips and then glued, you know, around and around. And see this one, this one even has a few mis a few problems, mistakes, I don't know. It's got a few problems. But this is, you hear that? Listen to this. This is hard on the bottom, but that's the only place it's really, well, around here it's hard, but it gets less hard around the edge. This is hard everywhere because the paper, this is more sturdy paper. Is this the one I did for the map challenge one? Yes, it is. Where we did the, um, the challenge for buying something for either 10 or $15 or less from Dollar Tree and making a project out of it. I took a map that was like a 20 by 24. I will try to link the video below, but this is what I made from that. And I've made other little bowls. This one has trash in it, but I've made other little bowls out of different kinds of paper. This paper was a little bit thicker than the notepad paper, but not as thick as this stuff. So you, you have to be very mindful of the kind of paper that you use when you do paper bowls. And if you notice, there's not a lot of matte medium in here either. I will never do that again. And see, it's not white and all blotchy. It looks really nice on the bottom. I just love the way this looks. And then I have another one, and I don't want to... Let me dump all the stuff out. I don't want to show you all the junk I've got in it. Okay, so this is another... Whoops! This is another bowl that I made in the past out of paper, and I made this one a little deeper than, see, the, this one's a little deeper, and the shape is a little different. It's a little smaller. This can fit inside here, and then this could go in there, and so on and so forth. But I really like making paper bowls. I, for some reason, you know, I, they are junk collectors. Now, I'm not going to lie. There's all kinds of junk that sits in this, and then I put this and this to make it look like it wasn't as junky. But you just can't lie. People walk in here and they go, oh, look, and they can see it piled up. <laughs> so anyhow, I really do enjoy making these, and I do like making these bowl videos because they're so much fun, and I get something useful out of it. As much as I like doing journals, I don't get as much enjoyment in putting stuff in them as I do making the journal for somebody else to fill up. But a bowl, there's something, I don't know, something very zen about a bowl. I just love the bowls. Anyhow, so there is my project with paper that I haven't messed with in a long time. I haven't made a paper bowl in, I don't know, a couple years. And I saw my friend Cindy's bowl and it's um, pottery. But, you know, I tried to mimic the the layers like it has in that pottery bowl with this paper, this one dollar paper pad from Dollar Tree. A dollar. I mean, come on. Where are you going to get a cute bowl like this for a dollar? 
hopefully you can make your own and it'll look better than this. <laughs> Save the matte medium. Do not use matte medium. Do the polyacrylic 50-50 mix because that's what this stuff is. And that's why this stuff is super duper hard. You just, you know, I mean, you can't beat this up. This is, you know, you could take a hammer to this and I don't think anything would happen to it. It's so hard. I will preface this by saying that there's probably 20 days worth of um, putting the polyacrylic on it and let it dry overnight, flipping it over, putting the polyacrylic, let it dry overnight, flipping it back, you know, doing the flip back and forth thing. So the paper is um, petrified <laughs> with polyacrylic. Anyway, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like, share, and subscribe. Give me a comment and, you know, one of those cute little thumbs up thingies. I'm starting to sound like all these other people that are doing it for money. Oh my word, I'm sorry. Anyway, you know what to do. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I appreciate it. See you guys in the next video. Bye.